Thank you. And in case anyone is disoriented, this was actually slated uh, in the number two position on our agenda, but because we had uh, some time issues yesterday, we've just incorporated this into our strategic planning session. So I'm gonna go over with you just, um, uh, some of you may or may not know that in October of 2017, I celebrated five years working with the Alliance um, and three years as general manager. Um, and also in September of this year, I got married and I have a new name, but it's the same old me. So my new name is Rachel Moles, Rachel Patterson Moles, and it's just like the animal. So there's my little mole <laughs> in the corner. Um, so in these five years that I've been with the Alliance, um, working closely with the board, what have we achieved? Um, one of the things that's most exciting is our growth in membership. So since 2012, we've increased our membership by 83%. Um, we started around 35 members in 2012, and we're now at 64. Um, we've added 14 new countries to our map, which means that we've had a 50% increase in countries, so we've doubled the number of countries represented in the alliance. So I'd like to take a moment and just have a round of applause for that, because I think we're stronger when we have more members of the alliance. Of course, as we have more members, our, our attendance has also increased. Um, and we've really steadily been growing our alliance meeting attendance. You'll see that in Chicago, which was my first meeting just two months after I started, um, we had 56 attendees. Um, we've steadily grown since then. In Dublin, we had 115. And this year, we don't have the final numbers in yet because some people register very late. Um, but we're expecting to be around 120, maybe 125. So that means we have a record. Um, okay. Alliance support grants. This is another great measure of what are, not only how are we growing membership, but also what are we giving back and how are we interacting with our members? So you'll see that this year we've done a huge record actually by awarding nine travel grants for the Boston meeting and we're very glad to have all of them with us. Um, since July 1st, so we, our fiscal year runs July to July, so since the beginning of this fiscal year, we've also awarded two partnership grants, which again support members' partnership travel. That's what Kathy was talking to us about yesterday. So thank you to our members who are doing that very important work of traveling for partnerships. And I would also encourage, as Kathy did, I would encourage all of you to think about what partnerships um, and mentorships, now that we're developing that program, Ron, you might develop through your relationships in the Alliance and how we can support you, whether it's financial support through a grant or other kinds of support. Our social media presence and visibility is another great measure of how we have grown. Um, when I started with the Alliance in 2012, we actually did not have any social media. Um, and our website, as you might recall, was quite out of date. So we established Facebook and Twitter accounts, which are updated regularly. <laughs> and we now have 2,678 Facebook likes and over 2,000 followers on Twitter. So we're pretty healthy in these social media accounts. And you can see these graphs just show our annual totals as we move through the years. Um, our social media accounts have been updated regularly, and I was very excited this year that I was able to pass the torch to Rachel Blanton, who now is the, our updater of social media so that I can do other things. So thank you, Rachel, for keeping these active, healthy, happy, and you've probably seen us on these networks during this meeting. I hope you've been interacting with us there. Financial stability, not the most exciting thing to think about, but extremely important to the progress of the Alliance. So you'll see that when I started uh, the first fiscal year that I worked with the Alliance, we were not in a healthy financial position, as Steve discussed yesterday. Um, we had a deficit, and that deficit shrunk in 2014, and we started having surpluses 
in 2015. You'll notice that in that year, because we had the ice bucket challenge, I also gave you an adjusted number if I took out the ice bucket challenge donations. We still had a surplus, just not quite as huge of a surplus um, without that ice bucket challenge money. And as you can see, our surplus has just steadily grown. And today, we're in the challenging, in a positive way, financial position of having a surplus that we need to spend. And so we're really looking forward to that. And I'm, I'm in fact, very proud and pleased. And I want to thank our current treasurer, Steve Bell, our former treasurer, Carol Burks, from before she was chairwoman, um, for helping and supporting me as we get the alliance on track financially. A huge amount of this financial growth, by the way, comes from member subscriptions, yes, have grown, but it also comes from supporting the meetings properly um, and having them sponsored properly so that we do not run these meetings at cost. What other kinds of achievements and growth? I can't make a graph for everything. I tried. But there are lots of other achievement and growth points that we can talk about from the last five years. Professionalization and policy making. And I'm sure that many of you in this room who are long-term members of the Alliance can speak to this. When I started, um, we really did not have a lot of formal procedures or policies. But over the last five years, um, we now have 10 very detailed and active policies that have been ratified by the board. If you ever want to look at them, uh, members can see them on our website on the members section, and we go over them at these annual meetings to note the policies that have been made. And this is excellent for the Alliance in terms of risk management and stability. We need to ensure that this Alliance is stable and secure, and that if anything goes wrong or if anything goes right, we have a plan. Our website and campaigns have grown tremendously. Again, as many of you who've been with the Alliance for many years will know, um, our Global Day campaigns have been growing, and I hope they've also been becoming more organized and more engaging. Uh, this year, we had the ALS MND Cheers Challenge that I hope some of you engaged with. We've also promoted um, the people living with ALS MND rights document, and we've had a lot of other social media campaigns. We've continued with our newsletters, which have record participation. And again, thank you to Rachel Blanton, who's now taken over the newsletter. Um, and we updated our website in early 2014. Uh, we, so we completely debuted a new website in early 2014. We updated that in 2016. And in fact, we'll be updating it again. Uh, actually, my, my meeting with the web developers is on December 18th, so I'll be engaging in that as soon as we're done with this meeting. Um, the, we also have the ALS MND Without Borders blog and a members only page on the website, which are new additions meant to react and respond to what members are telling us that they want from the Alliance and how we can better engage and communicate with you throughout the year. So I hope that you have felt that we've had positive reporting and telling you about what we're doing and what our members are doing. I do want to remind everybody while we're on this slide, if you've done something that you want to share with the Alliance at your home organization, please contribute a blog entry. We'd love to hear from you and we are open to member entries on the blog, especially about partnerships. Uh, another element that we've added to our Alliance is surveys and feedback. So Rob Goldstein has talked a lot about that research spending survey uh, that was sent around last year in 2016 and our potential follow-up to that survey, which is coming soon. I think, again, this is a valuable way where we can really start communicating with members about quantitatively about what they're doing in the world, which is important. Um, we sent around the strategic planning survey, which you all may remember just in the last couple of months, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. We also collected membership testimonials, which were extremely valuable, where we just run around to all members and we said, would you like to share something with us about how the Alliance is valuable to you and why membership is valuable to you? And what can we do better? What are we doing well? Um, those are very helpful in guiding us as we create new strategic plans and as we think about 
what programming is going to be most effective for members. Um, and they will be incorporated into the new website, by the way. We have big plans for 2018, which I'm going to talk about, but more surveys are part of that. I want to talk a little bit more about specifically the strategic planning and member engagement survey. We got voluntary feedback from 35 members, so pretty healthy. I know that these surveys can be a challenge for people who are non-native English speakers, so we do tend to get more responses from those in English-speaking countries. And at any time during this meeting, if you're one of those non-native speakers who took this survey and you would like to give me feedback about what would make it easier for you to engage with us in these surveys in English, please do let me know because I think that's important. Um, so some of the highlights of this survey, and we did still get plenty of non-English responses. 91% um, of respondents reported that they feel engaged by the Alliance, so that's obviously an overwhelming majority. We're very happy with that. Um, members felt overwhelmingly that we had a list of what do you think is a valuable program at the Alliance? And the one that got the most check marks was this meeting, the annual meeting. Uh, almost 90% of respondents identified the annual meeting as one of our most valuable programs. So that tells us a lot. It's probably something that we expected, but it tells us how much time and energy we really do need to invest in this meeting and in thinking about um, how to engage with our members during the meeting. More than 50% of respondents reported participating in a partnership activity with an association from another country during the last five years. So that's also a very healthy benchmark for us. We'd like to see it go up even more, but we're happy that a lot of our members seem to be engaging in some kind of formal partnerships. Um, on this survey, we also had a list of all of our current strategic areas. Uh, membership, advocacy, fundraising, information, and we asked people to rank them. Do you think these are important? All of these strategic areas were ranked somewhere between important and very important. So that also means that it would appear that our current strategic plan is reflecting what members feel is important for the Alliance to be achieving. And we can talk more about that when Carol takes over uh, to discuss the current strategic plan. Um, we would be happy to organize this feedback a little more formally and send it around to members after the meeting. That's something that Carol and I have discussed and frankly just simply didn't have time to do before the meeting, but that's okay. And in fact, I think it would be very valuable for us to send around the results of this survey along with some of the outcomes from today's strategic planning session. The last piece of this survey that influenced today's session um, and you'll remember that we did send around an agenda for this year's session, which is new for us. We've done a lot of planning ahead so that you can think about how you want to participate. Is we asked members in this survey, how should we break up into groups during the strategic planning session and what would be valuable to you? And we saw that the majority of people wanted to break up into groups uh, based on the strategic area. So in each of the big advocacy, fundraising, membership, et cetera. Um, and then the number two answer was about regions. Um, and so although we've decided to break up based on the majority into the strategic areas, there was also this regional idea. So I think that's something that going forward, we'll consider how we can uh, navigate that with members and think about why we're hearing this call for regional grouping. My operational outcomes in 2017. So of course, we have that big three-year strategic plan that's overarching, and every year I come up with an operational plan um, which uh, actualizes goals for the year. Members can view the operational plan at any time on our website. We do send it around by email to remind you as well. I hope some of you maybe have been following along. I know it's not always the most exciting thing to look at, my silly, quarterly updates on my, um, on my operational plans, but I can tell you that all of our goals for 2017 have been completed or expanded, and a big part of that expansion has to do with this website update we've decided to undertake. Um, in addition to the management and organization of the organization and our daily administration and planning the Boston meetings and all my regular day-to-day -day stuff, 
Operationally, here's what we have achieved. Um, Newsletters, blogs, social media, promotion of programs and resources, and a big thank you to Rachel Blanton because she's a lot of the legwork behind that, right, in terms of executing our communications. Uh, we had the wonderful Cheers campaign, and thank you to the board committee who organized that uh, or came up with the idea. The 25th anniversary video campaign, which has been so phenomenal. Um, and thank you to Rob Goldstein's team for helping us to edit that video, and thank you to all the members who sent me their videos to put in it. We've added nine new, men mem nine new members and three new countries to the map. We have seven new policies this year, so that's, we spent a lot of time writing and drafting and thinking about uh, where we need to formalize and professionalize the alliance, so we've developed policies around the review of Alliance support grants, the review of the Humanitarian and Forbes Norris Awards, um, revision of those application forms, and a lot of other important uh, housekeeping items for the Alliance. We have record sponsorship income this year, and we have record meeting attendance. So thank you to all of you for being here. And thank you to our platinum spotter sponsor, Cytokinetics. Uh, additional operational outcomes that are sort of being expanded and spilling over into 2018. Um, I've mentioned that website update that we're going to be undertaking, and a big part of that is the update of that useful links page that some of you might recall from our website. We're completely overhauling that. I'm going to turn that into a resource page where members can send in any resources that they have uh, about what is ALS MND and also uh, resources for caregivers, resources for the person living with the disease, and we'll organize it by language, by country. It'll be kind of like a database, a searchable database, and I have spoken with our web designers about creating this. Some of you have already sent me materials, which I have on file immediately to plug into this. If you haven't sent me materials yet and you're going to want to, once this new page is up, the other thing that I'm adding to it is you will be able to uh, submit a resource right on the page. So you can say, add resource, confirm that you're a member, tell us the link that you want to add and what it's about, and then it'll come to me to be vetted, and then it'll go up. So I, I think that would be an exciting way for us to engage and get resources to each other more quickly. Um, you've also heard that we're, we have terms of reference as of two days ago, finalized, adopted, for a PALS and CALS Advisory Council and also for a Scientific Advisory Council, and we'll be convening those uh, in 2018. The mentorship program, which Rod spoke so eloquently about yesterday, is a big uh, thing that we'll be executing in 2018. And of course, we are developing an advocacy toolkit for members that will be on the new website. If you have questions about that, I can talk to you a little bit more about that. Um, but it's intended to be a, a formula that members from around the world can use as they're doing advocacy. What kind of things should they focus on? How do they get started, especially in developing regions? And then, of course, the surveys that we've mentioned. We're going to be doing a new survey on care services offered by members, which is in draft form right now. And thank you to Kim McGinnis from the ALS Association for helping us out with that, giving us some of her expertise on that. Um, in a volunteer capacity, and we're also going to be doing a follow-up on the research survey, and thank you to Rob Goldstein for spearheading that as a board member. All right, that's it, unless somebody has questions for me, which I hope they don't. Uh, I want to thank Carol Burks, our chairwoman, outgoing, and now this slide, as you can see, I made this before I came to Boston, so now I want to modify and say also thank you to Steve Bell, my former honorary treasurer and my current chairman. Um, they've been extremely supportive to me uh, in helping me to grow this alliance and providing me all the support and mentorship that I need to do that. It's critical. I want to thank our coordinator, Rachel Blanton, who just increased her hours to 20 weeks, so I now have a half-time employee, which is fabulous. Um, and she does a great job. I want to thank our conference team, who helps me organize this meeting, the financial team, including Ben Haynes now, formerly Andrew Zielinski, and Andy Luke, our independent auditor, uh, the ALS Association, who hosts our service contract and manages 
my payroll. The MND Association, uh, who hosts our service contracts for the conference and financial team. The City Swim Foundation and ALS Netherlands, who have really helped us to increase our funding with their contributions. And it's greatly appreciated, and we look forward to our continued work together. And of course, our hosts in Boston, ALS Hope and ALS TDI, and all of our sponsors throughout the year. Whew. Does anybody have any questions for me? Oh, Gorian. I don't have a question, but I uh, crying for a bit of help because the money that we received from the uh, International City Swim was supposed to be used for uh, increasing the uh, countries that are a member of the alliance. And I just looked at the at their goals. And in 2020, we should be at at least 50 countries. We started in 2016 with 36. We're now on to 42. So at least eight more countries to be needed to get our goals. But I like to succeed, of course, our goal, but even more than that. So please try to find countries that will and can be a member of the alliance. And uh, the restricted money that we got from the Amsterdam City Swim is supposed to be used for that goal. So please help us to get more countries around the world to be a member of the alliance. That's it. Absolutely. Thank you, Gorgon. Oh, Kathy. Good morning. I want to thank you because we've talked about passion, we've talked about people, and we've talked about progress. Rachel, you have passion, you've got people, and we've made progress. Thank you so much. Merci. Thank you. We're very pleased with what we've achieved. Any other questions before we move on to the strategic planning session?